You know, there is one thing that money cannot buy. It doesn't come with a price tag, nor can you exchange it for a refund like a Christmas gift. It's peace. The only peace that really lasts and that can really hold you when life is spinning out of control is the peace that God gives. Hey, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Litton, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church and host of the Midweek Refill. I'm so excited to welcome you to this week's episode. This is part seven of our series entitled Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you the peace that Jesus brings to us, even when life spins out of control. I'm excited that you're here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, like, share, and do subscribe. Leave us a comment. Hey, I'll be right back after this. And welcome back to this week's episode. Make sure that you are subscribed and you do leave a comment. Hey, I also want to remind you, just in case this is your first time ever seeing my face, that you can download a free PDF workbook that accompanies this series of teachings. That's right. You can find the link right down below in the description box. I want you to make sure that you grab it because in it you will find not only a summary of the teachings that I'm providing here for you now, but you can also go back and read through it. And there is also the scriptures that we're sharing there. You can also find a wonderful little antidote a story that you can draw tremendous personal applications from to really use this teaching in your life. Because you know how it is. There are times when life will spin out of control. And I want you to be able to have what you need on hand. And more importantly, to be able to share with other people. Share it with your friends, with your neighbors, with your co-workers. Start your own little Bible study discussion with the discussion questions that you will find in the workbook. And again, it is free, F-R-E-E. -E. I want you to have it as my gift to you so that you'll be prepared when life spins out of control. And unfortunately, my friends, it will. Well, this is week seven. If you're not familiar with week seven, week one through six, please go back and check it out. But in this week, I want to talk to you about finding that peace that can only come from God himself. You know, we're talking about peace be with you, which is the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples and vicariously to all of us. Last week, we talked about pray for peace in session number six. But this week, I want to jump in to John chapter number 20 and verse number 26, where we find these words. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the doors, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Now, this is a very powerful passage and story. You know, Jesus had been crucified and his disciples were bewildered. They were all kind of stacked on top of each other in fear, literally for their own lives, wondering, where will our Savior be? What will happen to him? Even two of them went to the tomb to take care of his body. And when they got there, they were told by an angel, he is not here. He's risen where, where as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay past tense. And as they're gathered there in the house, literally the entire world of the Christians of that time had spun out of control. They had spent three and a half years with Jesus spending time with him, watching him do miracles, hearing life-giving teaching from the life giver himself. And now he's gone. 
they have watched him, though most of them from a distance, be crucified. And this horrendous treatment that they have seen Jesus receive, they are now fearful for their own lives because as followers of Christ, they knew, at least in their minds, they would be next. And so we find them in John 20. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. You know, Thomas is known as that doubting disciple who looked for the worst possible outcome. He did not believe even when he saw Jesus. Well, the Bible says that though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them of all things, peace be with you. And what a reassuring word that would be for them. Remember, the door was locked. So how did he get in there? Obviously in his spiritual and supernatural power and body coming out of that grave. He doesn't need open doors. He is the open door. And he says to them at a time when life has spun out of control for them, when they're worried about what the future held for them, what their outcome would be, what would their life look like without Christ present with them? And what would be their life now with Christ having been crucified and persecuted? What would happen to them? In walks Jesus through a locked door and he says to them, peace be with you. So let's talk about this. Just sort of a snapshot of John 20 and 26. Because following the crucifixion of Christ, his disciples were worried that they would be the next targets, as I said a moment ago. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as it seems, Jesus just appears. Hey, have you ever had an experience in your life when you were wondering what was next? What was going to happen next? What bad thing was approaching and encroaching your future? And then all of a sudden, Jesus suddenly appears. If you've ever experienced him suddenly appearing, that means showing up in a situation, working out something that you couldn't see your way through. Why don't you just drop it in the comments right now? I'm a witness. I'm a witness that he will show up at the nick of time, just when it seems like it's all over. And that's what he does in the life of his disciples. Just when it felt as if it was all over. They were done. There's nothing more to this. There's nothing left. We're next, right? Which one of us are they going to capture first? And even Peter had gone and hidden himself among the regular people, so to speak. And he denied our Savior that he even knew him. And then he hears the cock crow. As Jesus had already told them that before the cock will crow, the rooster will crow, you're going to deny me three times. Why did he do that? Out of fear of the unknown. Because their world had now suddenly spun out of control. Now I say suddenly, but Jesus had warned them a number of times, the son of man shall be betrayed and all of that. He warned them a number of times repeatedly, yet they didn't take him seriously. In fact, they even said, you know, before I let that happen to you, I'll go down first. And the one that said that didn't go down first, but he did go out the door first. He left the scene to avoid that kind of pressure. But when they were gathered in the house again, one week later, Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came, stood among them and said, peace be with you. So this is a message of hope for someone who is listening right now or someone you know. That there may be times in your life, even in your future, even in this year, that it seems as if life has completely and utterly spun out of control. What do you do then? How do you handle life when life is handling you? How do you respond? How do you react? 
How do you maneuver when everything you've known is now in the unknown? When your future is unknown? When what will happen next is unknown? You know, kind of like we're living in these tumultuous times. The future is unknown. And you may even have hidden yourself behind walls of safety or perhaps locked doors. Maybe in your life, it feels as if all the doors are not only closed doors, but locked doors. They're, they lock the door for their safety and out of concern for being crucified like their savior was. But here's the great joy in this story. Even when life is spinning out of control, even when death is all around us, even when we fear the worst possible scenario in any type of situation that we can face, and even when we are hiding from possibilities, and even when we have shut the Lord out, and even when we feel like there is no possibility of the Lord stepping in, here's the great news and the great hope that you and I can and should and must live with, and that is this. He will come even through your locked door and tell you, peace be with you. Let that be a message of comfort and hope and excitement and refreshment to you to know that even when you have locked faith out of the door and even when the possibilities seem to be the worst case scenario, he knows how to come through your locked door and bring peace to you. That's what he does. And that's what he will do for you if you will trust him. He doesn't need you to open the door, the physical door. He just needs you to open the door of your faith and say, Lord, however you want to do it, it's all right with me. Do you trust him? Do you know he'll take care of you? Do you know that no matter what you face this year, this season, this lifetime, he knows how to find you, how to find you right behind your locked wall of fear, your locked walls of drama, your locked walls of grief. And he'll step in and come in and see about you and make everything all right and take care of you and surprise you with peace, even when life is spinning out of control. Hallelujah. I love God for that because he always steps in just when we need him the most. And my friends, he's going to do that for you. Not only for you, for your children, your children's children and those that you love. I want to encourage you one final time as we wrap up this series and prepare to launch the next one next week. I want to encourage you, get the free PDF workbook. Go through it. Read through it. Answer the questions, read the stories, catch up with us through all seven parts of the series so that you can live a life free of fear, free of worry, free of grief, and knowing that even when life spins out of control, you know the one with his hands on the controls. Hey, I love you so much. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. Join us right here on this channel every Sunday live at 9.30 a.m. Or catch the replay. Go back and watch some of the messages of hope that God gives us through our church. And we would love to have you as a part of our virtual congregation. Just simply send us an email and say, I'm in. I want to be a part of the family. Hey, much love to you. The peace of God be with you now and always look forward to sharing with you next week in our brand new series. God be with you.